love it if you were to hand the baton over to Miss Sophia. All righty. It's all yours, Sophia. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here this morning. My name is Sophia Geraldo, and I am your true beauty coach. I work a lot with women uh, belly to belly in the beauty space, helping you get glammed, helping your skincare game get right for over 15 years. And so I'm that person that you go to where you're like, oh my gosh, I have something to go to. And now I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Call me, right? So <laughs> what happened was I was in that space. I've been in that space for over 15 years, but people didn't know that as I was helping them to become more confident in how they showed up in this world, that I was going home to a marriage filled with abuse and betrayal trauma. And that my confidence was really, really low. People didn't know that. And so um, what happened was I wound up getting married to someone um, that had a sex addiction and I didn't know what to do. And so in that moment, it really had, like I said, my confidence low, my self-worth wasn't where it was, but I decided that I wanted to step into a personal recovery journey. And on that personal recovery journey, I met a therapist and she said to me, Sophia, you're going to have to learn how to live for an audience of one. And those words she said to me, it really shifted everything. And out of that experience, now I help women find healing and community. I help them rediscover their beauty and become confident in who they are because of whose they are. And so I'm really excited about what I get to do. Um, and I have a question for you ladies today. We were just talking about some mindset stuff. And my question just happens to be around mindset. So I'm going through this book study with a accountability group of other entrepreneurial women. Um, and we're reading this book called Go Big Now by Julia, Julia Pimsler. And so we just finished a chapter about limiting beliefs. And if you are not familiar with limiting beliefs, it's those things that you kind of think in your mind, those things that you think are true. Most often they're, you know, they're really negative. <laughs> I can't do um, this happen to me. And so I want to talk a little bit about limiting beliefs because one of the ones that I've, and I'm be vulnerable here, one of the ones that I've had to wrestle with in my business is um, around my ability to be successful. Because when I was going through um, the abuse in my marriage, um, I worked really hard to fix that thing. Like I thought it was my fault and I worked really, really hard to try to make things better. And that's one thing I can say, like I tried, you know, <laughs> oh, I tried. Right. And so when I bring that over to my business, a lot of times I can get into the um, mind space of I worked really hard at that marriage. I tried to fix that thing and it crashed and burnt. And my belief I can work really hard at my business and it's going to crash and burn, you know? And so that can limit me and that can keep me from taking big steps. And so learning how to deconstruct those things and push past those things is what I um, continually work through. So I would like to open it up to you ladies. And when you, um, if you don't mind sharing what your limiting, one of your limiting beliefs is and what tips and strategies that you've taken to just bust past those things. I would love to share on that. Um, that's such a, look, such a, uh, you know, universal question. It's one of those universal questions we can all have a, you know, um, a phenomenal answer to. But um, one of the things that I, you know, struggle with was that I'm not enough. And I was, you know, I didn't, I, I intentionally was like, I don't want to own a business. There's just no way I don't want to own a business. But I got in a space where the corporation that I was working for loved me for me. And so when it was time for presentations on behalf of the company, they would come to me. When it was time to woo the crowd, they would come to me. And then I got to a point and said, wait a minute, if they love me for me, I should start loving me for me. I was trying to be her and I was trying to be him and I was trying to be everybody else, yep. but the company loved me for me. And so when I start accepting me for me and understanding that I am enough right now on my way to becoming, then yep. I, then I was like, Oh, oh okay. Okay. I, I got this all day. I got me all day. I'm the best version of me and nobody else can be me, but me. Yep. Love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Who else? Anybody else want to jump in? Go ahead, Michelle. 
get, I always call it head trash. So mm. growing up, you get all this head trash, all the things that happen to you. And so I had a lot of self doubt of problems of all of that. And I poured into a lot of self development, but I think what was key is that I had someone believe in me mm. before I believed in myself. That's good. And that shifted everything. And I was like, well, wait a second. And it's just like she was saying, like once somebody believes in you and you're like, oh my gosh, wait a second, these people believe in me? Wait, what am I missing? Yeah. And then you start to look in and you're like, you have to love yourself before you can, can go out there and have success. And you have to get rid of the head trash and and, and try to um, shift your mindset to a place of I deserve more. Yeah, I I I deserve abundance in all areas of my life. And no matter what has happened in your past, and how many people have beat you down, you are amazing just the way you are. Everyone yes. is perfect just the way they are. And I always go out and try to be better than I was yesterday. And sure, I make mistakes and I screw things up all the time. Yeah, that's so good. We have a question here. Charlotte, she says she loves head trash. She says, wow, yes, I have that as a single mom. How do I start to believe in myself? What is the first step? What is the first step? Anybody want to tackle that? Lynette, you go first and then I'll jump in. Okay. <laughs> yes, the two coaches, we're going to make this a, like a group coaching session. So I'm excited to partner with you. And we, go <laughs> and we can try a team on this one. So I'm going to give a little bit of a quick um, neuroscience uh, background. So I am trained in the limbic performance system, right? So our midbrain and how we think we feel and how it ultimately impacts what we do. So when we think about, I love this term head trash. So I am going to have to coin it and always give credit to, to Michelle for it. But essentially... Um, what is happening in the brain when something, when we have an experience, it could be a, a memory, it could be happening one time, our brain has to do something with that. It will either delete it. That's when you're like, oh gosh, what'd you have for dinner last night? And you're like, what did I have for dinner <laughs> last night? It's going to notice it. It's going to try to map it to, is this a previous experience, right? And this is where if you start to have the same thoughts over and over again, you're now building that head trash, right? I've noticed that. I've felt that before about myself. I can't get to things on time. It makes me feel bad. So it's going to delete it. It's going to notice it. And it can even distort it at times, right? So now I have to really be down on myself. Or maybe I get really excited about something because I want to give myself a like a whoop whoop. So it's, kind of, it's really at a baseline level. That's how you're going to start to build those beliefs in your, in your brain. It doesn't mean that they're truths. It means what is, has happened with an experience that I have had. This is why we live in a world of various different beliefs and others have them. But another cool thing about our beliefs is that they actually inform our values. Mm -hmm. So when we start to look at our own personal self-worth, our own values, right? So if you're like, okay, I really believe I get connection. I really enjoy the work that I do. You usually feel that you do more of that work. But if your belief is, hey, I'm struggling as a mom, I don't seem, I can't, you know, do the Pinterest level type things, or I forgot certain things. I'm, I don't seem organized with it. You start to feel that and that it, it just keeps this cycle over and over and over again. So starting with that is whether it's getting yourself um, surrounded by a lot of the resources to help you on the beliefs level. It could be that you might need to work with a therapist or something that there may be something even back that have triggered a memory that that goes, where did that belief even begin? Mm -hmm. How did that, that start? We've gone through educational systems. We've gone through different jobs. We've gone through relationships. It could be marriages, different things that we didn't even realize our brain went through. Either we deleted it, we noticed it, or we distorted that experience. And it has now been stored within me if it's still there. And it's something that keeps <laughs> coming up. It could be just an understanding of your core values even more. And quickly doing exercises of like, what is it that I really love to do? What is it that I like to read? What is it that I like to experience? What is it that really annoys the heck out of me? Well, what's the opposite of that? Because I want more of that. And what do those things give you through the process of experiencing them, right? You'll start to uncover more or less your, your values on a tangible level and getting those words 
and then connecting them and saying, well, gosh, how do I rewire my actual brain science to come back if I believe this or I really enjoy, I, I want joy in my life. Joy is very important to me, but to do that, I've got to go deeper level and I've got to go what feeds my joy and I've got to create new memories that create those beliefs. So that's just kind of a way for, you know, Charlotte, as she wants to think about starting to believe in herself, the things that you're experiencing, what is your life like, your world that are going to create those memories, fire off those neurons, um, and really build the life for you that you want. So it is a, you know, and it starts with little steps. It could just be how you invest in your you time, your time to reflect, your time to journal, your time to see yourself in just what you're feeling, what you're thinking, and how it impacts what you do because they're so interconnected. I love so that. I, to Jen. I, I love what Net, I, I love what Lynette's saying because then that next thing that happens is when you've done that, you create new I am statements. And an I am statement is a matter of fact truth. Um, and it creates that belief system that the universe has no other option but to create it to come to pass. And so um, it's when we say I am fat, then I am fat. Like I will always look at myself if I continue to say that and it will, my body and everything around me will do everything in its power to make that statement true. And so when you attack those value, that value system and really get down to what is it that I believe? Why do I believe this way? Is it a true thing or do I need to delete it? <laughs> Did I distort it? Um, then those create your true I am statements and you can start changing them. I am beautiful. I am worthy. I am valuable. I am smart. And you become what you say. Right. And mm -hmm. so um, that just uh, and I can say this because Lynette and I have done <laughs> these things. <laughs> you know, we've all I think of many of us on this panel have done a lot of this work. Um I'm right there with you, Sophia, as I was in a horrific relationship. I was um, taken by a serial abuser and uh, for six years he had me and I lost everything that I ever had, every value, every dime, every sense of worth. Um, I was the lowest of the low and I felt that for the rest of my life, everybody would view me that way, that I was not only head trash, but I was trash. And so when you're in that space, it's hard. And especially if you're the one doing it to yourself, if you're the one abusing yourself, that's really, really hard to get over. And so all of these things that women, that as women were saying, we're saying, because as women, we struggle with this a lot. And we don't have to have gone through it. We just struggle with this bad mental picture of ourselves. And it's way worse than what other people view us. So anyway, thanks, Jen. What did you want to say? <laughs> so, Y'all hit it. Um, I want to go like real simple here. Like, what's the first step? Challenge the belief that you're having. Yeah. Just challenge it. Because all the science that Lynette just shared is incredibly true. Um, I was actually going to dive into the same thing about which actually, Sophia, with your original question with limiting beliefs about how there's layers of limiting beliefs. Like limiting belief is actually the weakest one. Mm. Interpretations, assumptions that we make about ourselves and our inner critic. That's when it like the limiting belief that I'm not enough is actually the inner critic, which goes back to something that happened probably between ages of seven and 10, which is Lynette, what you were saying, like when we start to distort the truth, but the real basic step of like how to start limiting the, the head trash, right? Silencing the head trash is when we start to think those negative thoughts, just ask like, whoa, why am I thinking this? And what else could be true? Mm -hmm. What else could be true? The same thing um, you mentioned, Charlotte, that you were a mom, like the same conversations that you have with your kid. Like if your kid comes home from school and he's like, you know, so-and-so doesn't like me. I'm a terrible person. Well, no, you're not. Yeah. sweetie. Why do you think that? What else could be true? So it's having those same compassionate conversations with yourself is the number one way to stop with the head trash. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Thanks so much, Jeff. Michelle. Sabrina, do we have time or are we switch? Go ahead. Up? Yeah, go ahead. Well, and you know, every day is a struggle. So mm -hmm. take those baby steps because, you know, you can start getting back into your head no matter what. Like I got mm -hmm. into my head this morning because I totally screwed up when I got on here and I did it all wrong and I didn't mean to do it wrong, but I did. 
And it just threw me off the entire time because I was beating myself up the whole time saying, oh my gosh, I did it wrong. I didn't mean to do that. I had my questions laid out, but the shift this morning changed everything. Sorry. But, but, but I just, but I want people to know that every day you make mistakes, things happen. So you have to be able to shift out of that. Okay. I made a mistake. I did it wrong. I'll do it better next time and not get stuck there because I used to get stuck there for weeks, months, years, and it would continually play over. I, you, people make mistakes, things happen. So it's just making those baby steps every day to do better than you did yesterday. Exactly. And to go along with that, Michelle, the very first um, round, they used to be called round tables. Now they're called impact panels here on her version. The very first one I did, I actually left the directions to my ladies up on the screen where it said like, please make sure your head is centered and make sure your lighting is good. So not only did I leave that up for like the first like minute of us coming on live, but then also there's a typo in the directions. So I was mortified. I'm like, I'm telling all my friends, I'm like, I got this thing going. I'm so proud of myself. I got these ladies that are coming on and this and that. And, you know, family, friends are watching, like supporting me. And then I'm on, do the whole intro, everything. We introduce the first person and then boom, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so mortifying. And that itself could have kept me from doing this again. Like that's embarrassing, you know? And then being able to show that to the next group of women and being like, this is what it looks like knowing that there's a typo and that there's this thing right front and center as soon as they start. And then the feelings of like, they're going to think I'm an idiot. They're going to think, I don't know what I'm doing. This looks so juvenile. Um, But now, you know, looking, I didn't let that hold me back. Same as what Michelle said. I didn't let that you know, wear me down. You dwell on it for a little bit. You get sad about it for a little bit. You beat yourself up for a little bit and then you just keep going. You have to keep continuing, keep creating and keep building. And those of you that are on here with me now probably never even saw that one and don't even know. Do you know what I mean? So, so, so important. What's up, Crystal? I just wanted to tell you, Sabrina, I noticed that. And (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I did not think you were an idiot. All I thought I was that. that you had prepared your panel. Yes. And uh, <laughs> typo, no big deal. I see typos all day long. You know, everywhere I look, there's typos. No big deal. Um, I love that. No, it, you are so hard on yourself and i think we all are very hard on ourselves if that was the worst thing that happened that day whoo <laughs> <laughs> you're okay thank you. girl thank you thank you for chiming in i appreciate that